So, uh, we are continuing our series, all right? A couple weeks ago, we did a nine-point positional drill from the person when they're in the quarter position or the turtle position, okay? When they shell up and they're being, they're very, being very defensive. So we worked a couple weeks ago, a very simple nine-point drill, just teaching you how to move around somebody that's shelling up in that quarter position. And then last week, we worked on a second position, and today we're working on position number three, which is the reverse knee ride. Okay, so just a real quick review of the, the, the two positions. So Curtis is going to start down in the quarter position. He's got it on his knees and elbows, and he's shelling up, and he's protecting himself. Okay, so we're going to start with is the front headlock. So one hand is going to cup the chin, and that same knee is going to be down. I'm going to put my shoulder right in the knot of his neck, and I'm going to have a post slide right here. This is where we're starting, okay? My other hand is going to grab his tricep. Okay? But I want to effectively do is I want to create space between his knees and elbows. Okay, So if you rotate a little bit this way, the guy's in the camera, perfect. So we're right here. Right? I want to own the space between his knee and elbow. Okay, It's not there right now. So I'm going to give him a good pull, separate his knee to his elbow, and now I'm going to insert my post leg. So this kickstand is going to insert my knee in between his knee and elbow, and I'm going to pivot and face him. This was position two. Last week we worked a crucifix series in the nogi and the nogi class, okay? Where I worked to trap his near side arm and, and choke from there, okay? So now we're moving on to position three. Position three is all I'm gonna do is just switch my hand position and switch my knee position. So now I'm in a reverse knee ride. So I got my knee inside, okay? We're gonna see it a little bit just for the camera angle. Perfect right here. So I got one knee inside and I'm covering his hips like a blanket. Okay? I'm not over committing my body weight, okay? but I'm also not off him a little bit. Right? So I'm just kind of covering him like a blanket, just like that. Perfect. All right? This is the position three that we're working the series with today. Okay? So again, from the front headlock, let's rotate this way. All right. So now we're going to work our series. And it's going to start with an uh, arm and guillotine. Okay, so we start here, right? front headlock. I pull position two. All right? Switch my hands, position three. Okay? Our main sequence today is going to be working into the truck, which is a leg entanglement series. Okay, but during that whole in series where I'm kind of playing with his legs, sometimes you can feel the person's head start to kind of like lift up just because I'm facing this way. So that he's like, oh, my neck is safe, right? Because I'm not facing his neck area, okay? So that a lot of times that can open up a, a guillotine option, right? Anytime the guy's head is up, it's very easy to start wrapping the neck. So what I want to do is first, I want to use this inside knee and I want to open it. See what it does to his elbow? It opens up that space where his armpit is. Okay? My top side hand, the hand that's covering his hip, what I want to do is I want to work to like clean his back with my elbow and I want to wrap his neck nice and deep. Okay? While I'm still here, my hand is going to come through and it's going to find my own hand and I'm going to grip it. And there's a lot of different ways you can grip your hand positioning okay? with this arm in guillotine. I like to go with an S grip. Okay? So I interlink my fingers together like this. You can do a bunch of different grips. Whatever feels most comfortable for you. So I'm here, right? Open. I already opened up the knee, so I wipe the neck and I get it nice and tight right here, and I cinch it in. Now, while I'm still kind of like kind of turned this way, I want to work to fall back, put my right hip on the floor, and attack a guillotine right here. So my hands are together, all right? I'm working the choke right here. What I want to do is this foot right here is needs to hook along his hip lines. Okay. If I don't do that, his first reaction is going to be to hop over my legs. And now I lose pretty much the guillotine for the most part, okay? So as soon as I fall back and cinch up that guillotine, I need to hook that hip line so that he can't hop over. So I'm right here, position three, right? I use my knee, I open up that space. I wrap the neck, get my hands together, I start to fall back, and right away, boom, that's my first hook. Okay? Second hook comes over the top, nice and high, as high as I possibly can, and now I'm in the guillotine position. Okay, standard guillotine mechanics. I want to drop my elbow with a choking arm, lift up on the wrist, and then I add my hip flexion. Sorry. Okay. So again, we got the guillotine choke. I grab my own hand. I'm dropping the elbow down, which is forcing his head into his hips, creating more of a bend to his neck. And then I lift up on the choking hand, and then I add my hip flexion to give that last little oomph. Okay. But it all starts with the arms, right? Got to have a nice cinch on his neck, do the mechanics of dropping the elbow, lifting up on the wrist, and then the hips are the last part, okay? So again, we're here, okay? Maybe I'm messing around with his feet, I feel his head pop up, open the knee to create space where his armpit is, wrap the neck, grab my hands together, look how I'm starting by falling to my hip. I don't wanna turn and fall to my back too early, okay? So right here, look, I'm staying on my side, I'm staying on my side, now I fall to my back, 
the very last second. That's gonna make sure that I keep this arm in play the whole time, okay? And then I come up nice and high, as high as I possibly can, squeeze, and then I pop my hips for the choke. Okay, watch another angle here. Perfect. So we're here. All right, I'm covering his hips. Maybe he feels like I'm attacking his legs. I open up the knee, drop down nice and tight right here. All right, I'm not coming here loose with all the space. I'm keeping my arm nice and tight as I wrap the neck. Boom, right here. All right, slowly start to fall my way backwards. Boom, right there. Leg comes over the top as high as I possibly can. Squeeze my knees together, right? That's connecting me to him. Squeeze the bicep, right? Do the breaking mechanics or the squeezing mechanics of the guillotine. And then I pop my hips. Perfect. Last angle. Stay here. Perfect. Right. Last one. Covering the hips. Open the knee. Sink back to the guillotine. Fall back. Catch. Hug. Squeeze and pop. <laughs> Sorry, brother. Nice, Mike. Okay. Any questions? You guys want to give it a shot? All right. One, two, three. Time. So now we're moving on. All right. Now we're going to get into the real series of today, which is the truck. Okay. The truck is a leg entanglement series, all right, where we use two of our legs to entangle one of theirs, all right, and it puts it in a position where I have a lot of options for submissions and transitions, okay? The biggest thing is gonna be this leg foot, or this, excuse me, this footwork and how to get the lockdown or the truck position, okay? So we're gonna really focus on this leg movement and the leg uh, positioning, and then we'll get into submissions from there, okay? So let's rotate just a little bit more. Perfect, okay, so we're, we're in position three, all right? All right, I'm again, I'm, I'm over top of them. I'm not too much, right? But I'm also not too far away. Okay, so here we go. Both of my hands, I want to work to control his far ankle. All right, right there. Just like that, okay? Now my post leg, what I want to do is I want to stomp on his near side Achilles. Okay, so I'm here. I'm actually going to put my foot right on his ankle. Just like that, okay? Now, I'm going to pull him on top of me. As I pull him on top of me, I want to stretch his foot away from his butt. So as I pull him on top of me, I want to stretch that foot away. See what it does? Now, this side, this knee was my knee ride, right? It's going to come over the top. It's going to come under my ankle. And now watch my left foot. It's going to circle on the other side of his shin. Now, it's very important that I stretch my inside leg. And now I'm here. Right? I extend both legs, making sure the inside leg, I'm really focusing on stretching, and then I curl my toes back, and now he's locked into place, okay? Curtis, try, he's gonna move around a little bit, try to get that leg out. It's very, very, very difficult, all right? I'm essentially creating a wedge in between his legs. Okay, I just relaxed for a second, all right? That's why I say. But again, if I stretch really, really, really hard, it's gonna be very hard for him to bend his leg, okay? Not impossible, and if he does bend his leg, it opens up submission opportunities to me, okay? so. We'll get there though. We're just gonna first work on the weave and getting the, the truck, as they call it, okay? It's very similar to the lockdown, just done from a different position, okay? It's all about weaving your legs and trapping their ankles. So again, we're here, right? I step on the heel or the Achilles, pull on top of me. Remember, over, under, and then this foot weaves in front, and here we are. Now I'm locking it in there. This, these hands right here just stay on the ankle that I grab, and I just keep his ankle close to his butt. And now I'm working from this position right here. This is the truck. Okay, big thing is making sure that my hips, or my body's underneath his hips. Right, the more he starts to go away from me here, the harder it's gonna be to get this truck position. There's less flexibility, less dexterity in my legs to be able to get it. Okay, so when I'm doing this backward pull, making sure that I'm really underneath his hips. Okay, I just want like, this part of his back to be touching on the ground. So I want my body to be pretty much right here. Okay. So one last time and then we're gonna work it. Just the footwork. Stomp, pull, look, over, under, and then circle. And then I stretch both legs, focusing on this foot, the inside foot. Perfect. Double up on the ankle and I control right here. Very, very simple. Just getting to the truck. Okay, let's drill it. One, two, three. Truck to work. Okay, cool, time. All right, so now we're gonna add two submissions to that truck position together. We'll, we'll drill them together, one after the other, and then we'll get to our third submission. It was a little bit more advanced, but it's a really, really good technique. Very, very powerful. Okay, okay so first, we're gonna get into the truck. 
Okay, we're gonna work uh, two, two moves. We're gonna work a banana split, okay, so you can think about what we're doing. Banana split and then a calf slicer. Okay, those two are gonna fit together and then we'll, we'll get to the twister at the end. Twister's gonna be the very last one. A little bit more involved, but again, everything starts with the truck, okay? So we're gonna work on the banana split and the calf slicer. Put them down, right here. One more, okay. okay. Everything starts with the truck. So stomp on the up. Oh, making sure, look, stomping on the heel is very important, okay? If I put my foot in between his legs, I can pull him backwards, but now if he keeps his leg bent, keep your right leg bent, yeah, now I can't get that, um, that, that truck position, right? Because I gotta weave this like all the way over. It's gonna be very, very high and a lot of flexibility. Okay, so if we go back, making sure that when you stomp on the heel, you extend his leg, giving you clearance for that other leg to come over. Okay, so now when I'm here, now if I stomp on his leg and I pull him backwards, now I can keep his leg straight. It's gonna give me time to bring this leg over and then weave it through, right? The other way around when he has his knee bent, I couldn't do that. Okay, so that's why it's important to stomp on the heel as you start to pull backwards. It's gonna allow you to get the clearance to the truck. Okay, so we're here, cool, all right? Making sure that I'm staying nice and strong with the leg extension. Okay, I'm just gonna loosen up for, just because we're drilling and it sucks, okay? So right from here, I still got this double ankle control. What I wanna do is I wanna try to put his ankle in my armpit, if you can, okay? If you can't, in the elbow joint is fine, but if you can, I wanna trap that ankle in my armpit. And then I'm gonna double up my hands right on top of his knee, okay? Just like that, very simple, right? The lower I am on the, on the thigh, the less kind of pull, the less leverage I have on his knee, right? Bend your knee, uh, yes, you see? Right? He, can, he can kind of overpower me because I'm not, but once I come up here, the lever point is much stronger. So now try to bend your knee, all right? It's gonna be a lot harder for him to do it, okay? So again, now all we're doing is I'm bringing his knee to my head as I'm extending the truck away. <laughs> There's a little pop there. That was nice. I oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay. So nice. Curtis is very flexible. He's a yoga instructor. He's very flexible. So <laughs> he has a lot more range of motion than most people do. Okay. So let's say I got to the very end of the stretch and I feel like I can't pull anymore. I can't extend my leg anymore. Watch what I do with my left foot. I'm actually going to unweave the lockdown and I'm going to put it on top of his foot. Okay. I'm going to relax this, this hand here. But now watch. As I use my foot, look how I can get like an extra inch of range of motion, okay? For somebody that's really flexible, once they've gotten to their full, you know, split, adding an extra inch of range of motion is a lot, okay? So if you get somebody that's really, really, really flexible and you can't pull anymore, bring this leg over the top of, on top of his heel and then just push with your foot. That's all you need, a little extra movement, okay? So if you need a little extra range of motion, that's gonna be his little ticket. But most people are gonna tap by the time you, know, you get that spread eagle. Or the, Banana split. Okay, but if you need an extra little bit of range of motion, that's what you do. You just stomp on his heel and give him a little bit more. Okay, so that's the banana split. Spread eagle, crotch ripper, and a lot of words for it. So again, I pull, extend, I get my truck right from here. Armpit, hug, hug, boom. All right, that's where I get my banana split. Okay, if I feel he's starting to get his knee like bending his right leg, right? I, he's like, yeah, it's like for whatever reason, maybe my lockdown wasn't tight enough, okay? If he's starting to bend it. Now watch, I wanna clear this foot away from my head. Notice how I'm kinda going more perfect, like parallel with him, All right? I bring my knees to my chest, and I'm gonna reach up, and I'm gonna grab his toes right from here. Making sure that I keep my heel right here, I'm keeping this flexed, okay? It's exposing my shin, right? Making my shin very, very sharp, okay? So right from here, I'm pulling down on his foot, and I want this foot here, I can triangle my leg and pull down and get the tap, okay? But even worse is stomping on my own heel. So I'm pushing my heel into his shin as I'm pulling down on his ankle, okay? I'll try to do it nicely, okay? But you, know, you, you do it really, really hard, really fast, it's a lot of pain, okay? Again, making sure that my shin is straight into his, his calf muscle, okay? That's gonna give me the, the lock. So we're going to work the banana split and the calf slicer. One more time. All together. So I'm in position three. Right. Grab, stomp, pull, weave right here. Banana split or calf slicer. Okay. Notice how I still keep this leg. 
right? I still keep it. I don't want this foot. All right, if I go here, I let it go. Maybe he uses his hand. He uses his foot to push my hand off of his ankle. And now we're in a scramble. Okay, so I keep this foot with this hand, and all I need is that one foot. That's it. Okay, you can come through and you can double up with this hand, but be careful having your elbow lined up with his hips. Because if he reaches and grabs my hand, he can get me in a weird arm lock. Okay, very unlikely it's gonna happen, but that's Murphy's Law. Okay, so enter into the truck. Banana split, then we move that foot out of the way, bring our knees to our chest, and we go for the calf slicer. Okay, any questions? All right, let's give it a shot. One, two, three. Okay, cool, time. All right, so we get to the truck, all right? For whatever reason, the first two, not working, not happening, whatever, he's defending correctly, or you just don't know those two techniques, let's say, okay? So the truck also allows us to take the back very, very easily with good control, okay? So, get into the truck, everything's getting to the truck. Boom, saw, pull, right here. Boom, leg, leg weave, and we're here, all right, perfect. Now, I keep the, the truck very, very strong. All I actually do is I just stretch the truck away Right, and now look, it's very easy for me to sit up and start to take the back. So I get my seatbelt position and I keep the truck the whole time until I get my hands locked together. Okay, now that I got my hands locked together, I got good chest to back connection. Now I can unlock the truck, move my hip a little bit, and then get my second hook in. All right, cool, very simple. So you always have that option to just go to the back. Very cool, very easy, very straightforward. You can do that right from the beginning. That could be your first move. You could just use the truck to get to the back. Forget about those two submissions that we did. All right, so very easy, okay? So when we do chase the back, the guy realizes it. He works to keep his back on the floor and he's gonna hand fight my hands, right? So I can't get my seat bump position, okay? I'm trying to think of which position. Let's rotate a little like this. All right, perfect, just for the camera angle. Boom, we're here, right? I pull him on top of me and I get my weave, okay? I stretch away, I'm trying to take his back, but he works to keep his back on the floor and he's hand fighting me. Right? Yeah, you see? I can't get underneath to get to the to the to the underhook and, and to get my seatbelt. Okay, so watch what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna baseball grip his closest hand. I'm still keeping the lockdown very strong with the truck. Still keeping it very strong. Baseball grip is near hand. What I wanna do is I wanna pull it towards me and then underneath my own head. Underneath my own head. And I wanna staple my head to the floor. Right? Because eventually I'm going to let go of his hand, right? So I'm going to reinforce it with my head. So my head is very heavy. I'm going to let go of the closest hand to his. I'm still keeping the other one, right? So I let go of the closest hand. And I want to work to get underneath his own head. Palm away. Close to the skull, right? I don't need to go by the neck, but I don't want to go too high up to the skull. But, so just pretty much like by his ear, right? So I can feel my, his ear with my, my index finger. Perfect. Now, right from here, he's pretty much done. Once I get this arm underneath the head, man, it's gonna be hard for him to stop me. All he's gotta do is stop my grip. So he's got his right hand that's gonna stop. So once I get here, I'm gonna let go of his wrist, I'm gonna get up to my elbow, and I'm gonna get my hands together right here. He's done. If I can get my hands together, man, it's gonna be very hard for him to, to stop this. What I'm gonna do is I'm pulling his head towards me as I'm extending my, my truck lockdown and shooting my hips forward, okay? So it's a twister, so it's a spine lock. Okay, so do it very, very easy, nice and nice and slow pull. And there's the finish. Okay, if you've got long enough arms, you can actually triangle your own arms, like, you know, Darce position, right? But I most certainly don't have long enough arms. So I'm just going here with an S grip or a gable grip position, okay? So again, I'm here, I'm pulling on him as I'm shooting my hips forward, and that's why I call it a twister, because his spine is getting really, really twisted up, okay? Um, it's it's a, more of a rare, move that you don't see often, but when you do see it, man, it's very strong. MMA, you see it in grappling competitions. It's a very, very strong technique, but there's a lot of steps involved to it, right? There's like trapping the arm and getting underneath his head, right? So there's a few more steps involved to it. Uh, so that's why you don't see it often, but when you do see it, man, everybody's like, oh, Twister's coming, he's getting it. As he gets closer, every step that the person takes, getting closer to the Twister, everybody starts getting like all excited, like, oh, he's gonna get it, he's gonna get it. All right, all right so again, we're here. I stomp, I pull, I weave, I extend, I go to his back. He fights, he's fighting, he's fighting. Yeah, you see how he's putting his back on the floor? He's not letting me do it. If his shoulder comes off the floor, if his shoulder comes off the floor, I'm gonna get the back, all right? And then I can take my back. So he keeps his back on the floor, he's hand fighting me. He's hand fighting me. So I'm gonna grab this hand right here. 
right? Pull it towards your knee, go underneath the head. See how I'm stapling his arm to the floor so he can't get that arm back out. All right, let go of the close hand. I weave underneath his head, sit up, lock my hands together, pull, pop the hips, and then get there. All right, keep doing it, but yeah. Very, a lot of pressure on the spine. Be smart as the person getting done to, okay? Don't try to tough it out for the most part, okay? It, it can go bad really, really fast for you, okay? So if you ever get stuck in this submission, yeah, you can fight, you can you know, try to defend it, but don't, don't mess around. This is a very, very strong, very powerful move. Anything that you know, messes with the spine, the cerv you know, cervix, you know, not, no, nothing to joke around about, okay? So uh, you guys wanna see it one more time? One more time. Nice and smooth with a little less instruction. Rotate, 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 rotate. All right, truck, pull. Lock down, extend, get to the back. Don't let me get to the back, Curtis. Don't let me get to the back. Two hands. Pull. See, I'm still bringing my head to the floor right to there. Pull. Pop the hips. And then just let go of your hands. Let him unwind. And he gets to his knees, and then he's safe. Okay? Any questions? Let's play around. One, two, three.